It's all about Hello. philosophy. Hello. Hello. Hola. Hello. All right. Um, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here, first of all. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad to see uh, a lot of mobile developers. Just a quick question. Um, who is doing Android here? Okay. And so I guess the rest is like a hybrid iPhone? Yeah. Interesting. More green robots than apples. Uh, well, anyway, um, the idea of this talk uh, is not about like show technical stuff. Um, I thought a little bit about it. Uh, we're going to go through uh, different facts, basically. And, um, but uh, yeah, I will be telling you some, some stories, you know, that uh, are about my experience as a developer, uh, as a manager too. And let me get started, actually. I think we are all familiar with these kind of things, you know, developer facts. Uh, we are struggling with a lot of things, not only technical challenges, right? Uh, for instance, it always happens, you know, when we have to show something to our managers or something, it doesn't work. It's the, what we call the demo effect. Or when we try to deploy something to production, which is big, and we struggle with that. So this is like our magic. We try to run magic. And I will um, tell you a couple of mistakes that I've made uh, during my, my life as developer. And because it's super nice to share all this with you guys. And so um, the main reason is that, you know, other people don't struggle with the same thing. Or at least you will feel familiar with these kind of things. And yeah, and, and this is another fact, actually. Like when someone asks you, yeah, have you written all the tests? Of course, that always happens, right? Um, so. Uh, feel free to interrupt me whenever you want. Um, this is basically about philosophy and how to be a better programming programmer. Sorry, um, it's more about not the technical aspect, which I will mention again, but still, you know how we should behave, or you know when we are facing certain challenges. Um, my name is Fernando Cejas. I'm like many of you here. I'm a curious learner. I'm an Android lover software engineer, uh, and a geek, of course. Uh, I work at SoundCloud. Um, nowadays, what I'm doing, I used to be like a more uh, pure Android developer. I'm still doing Android, but uh, I'm part of the core team, which is about like um, infrastructure code. Let's say uh, I try to facilitate other developers to be faster when uh, developing features, user-facing features. And um, so that's it. And to get started with this philosophical talk, um, I usually like to, to understand what the concepts of my talks are. Like in this case, for instance, philosophy. Um, yeah, so why? Philosophy comes from the ancient Greek, which is philosophia. Uh, which is love of wisdom. Hmm. Interesting concept. Um, with that being said, um, I usually like to classify developers or engineers in different groups. So I'm going to start with two types of developers that I found um, during all these years. And uh, for on one side, we have the hacker. You know this kind of profiles, the hacker, the one that you just put a problem and he or she is able to solve it right away, get things done fast. But ah, sometimes they write, you know, these God classes, like 10,000 lines of code classes, and their code seems to be a little bit of a nightmare, you know, very hard to maintain, but we need this kind of people. They are so good. They, they see the matrix, you know, they see further down. Uh, on the other side, we have the philosopher. This is the typical guy, you know, that always need a, a new abstraction layer, layer. You know, this kind of like guys that think more, you know, like let's just solve a problem. Yeah, we need another ab abstraction layer here. We need to apply this pattern and pattern. So, um, 
of course, this guy gets things done, but sometimes, you know, it's too much abstraction. Uh, I have to say that I'm more on the side of the philosopher, which is not good, which is not bad. I think we need to find a balance in the end. But, um, yes, that's the first group of developers. What I've seen, and I think probably most of us, you know, identify with one or the other side, or at least a little bit, or maybe in the middle. Um, so, yes, let me mention another group of developers. Two different types again. Um, on the right side, we have the introverted developer, right? The typical Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Um, he's a shy guy. This is the kind of developer um, that they struggle with communication. You know, I, I used to be like that. I have to say that. I'm a more social night now, but you know that we are pretty good to communicate with computers, but not with people. Now, or at least we are better <laughs> to do that. So there we have a Peter Parker, but then we have Iron Man, Tony Stark. Tony Stark is like a more an extroverted uh, guy, and he's very social, he can speak, he's not afraid of speaking in public, he doesn't get nervous. Um, I have to say that I like, and from my perspective, I move from being very uh, introverted to more extroverted. Uh, I can speak in public. Uh, well, I try, I'm trying at least. But you know, you're always nervous. I mean, I have to say that I'm, at least, you know, the first few minutes, you're always nervous. That happens all the time. But yeah, uh, there's a, a good statement that says that 50% of the population is introverted. So for instance, we have like half of the population is introverted and the other part is extroverted. So um, I would say that um, if you want to jump to the extroverted side, it's way harder than being introverted because it requires you to develop certain social skills uh, and so forth. But uh, let's leave it aside for a little bit and let's go to the next type of developers, the solo developer. There's these people or, yeah, these kind of persons that need to be alone. You just put your headphones and uh, you like to work like that. Uh, you prefer to be like that in order to think, to solve problems, which is pretty understandable. And sometimes I think we all need that. But then we have the team player too, who is more, um, he needs people because he needs to communicate, he needs input and feedback every time he tries to develop or he tries to uh, build any feature. So um, those three groups, um, it's something that we'll cover a little bit later and I think we need to find a balance. And uh, with that being said, uh, that brings me to another bunch of things. And here I will start with a certain advice and some stories around um, lesson learns and how to be certain aspect that we need to take into account if we want to be better at programming or better as people too. Um, so the first one is continuous learning. We as developers, uh, we need to constantly learn. We need to read, we need to acquire knowledge. I think that's important um, because um, that's, a, that's something that, you know, nowadays the software evolves so fast that we need to constantly read, be reading, uh, we need to share our knowledge, we need to acquire a new one. And in order to get to that point, I would say, guys, always accept challenges. Don't be afraid of like screwing it up, just go for it. I mean, what's the worst case scenario? Just, I mean, you screw it up, you're fired to the next thing. That's not gonna solve the problem if they fire you. And I will tell you, um, um, a little story, but I'll wait a little bit because I screw it up in a very big way. Um, but that's coming later. So be prepared for change um, because code evolves, as we said. Um, I'm pretty sure that you, if you grab a piece of code that you have written uh, a couple of months ago, you will say, how the hell, man? How could I <laughs> written this? Um, so the language evolves. Um, I remember my first project, uh, 
at the university. That was a very long time ago. It was like, uh, I don't know, almost 20 years ago. So I started, um, basically, yeah, the project was about creating a chat. So we had two Pentium 100 connected to each other through a parallel cable. You know, these big cables, these parallel cables. And we had to develop a chat in assembler. In assembler. Oh my god. And we created, uh, I remember we created a, a very simple protocol and we were able to just, you know, type hello and then we would see hello on the other side. Wow, that was amazing. And <laughs> it turned out that then we print the code and we needed around, I don't know, 10,000 lines of code to just say hello from one side to the other. And that's why, you know, language is evolved. I don't think anyone here is going to start developing an assembler, or maybe there is someone, but yeah. So language is evolved. And nowadays, I'm pretty sure that you grab any library, any framework, and you're able to create a group chat or WhatsApp. Well, not WhatsApp, but um, something pretty simple uh, in, in not a big amount of time. So, and we evolve as, a deve as, as developers, as professionals. Um, so, my, my advice here is just don't be shy. Just, I don't know, expose your ideas all the time. Just spread your word, voice your opinion. What can happen? Usually people tend to think um, that, oh man, I'm not going to ask this dumb question because then yeah, there's so many good developers around and then they might think that I'm, I'm stupid or something. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm constantly asking questions all the time and, and because we cannot know everything. And uh, yeah, of course. So, um, in order to learn, we need to write code, of course, if we are interested in it. We need to read code, too. And, and the most important part is just learn from experiences. For me, uh, that is the best part of our um, area. Just like you uh, screw it up, just get a lesson learned and, and transmit that so, you know, uh, so other people don't, you know, uh, screw it up too. So, but then there's another aspect. If you want to be an expert, it's well known that in order to become an expert on something, you need like 10,000 hours of a specific topic, which means that you, you will need some time to invest on a certain technology if you want to get expertise on that. Um, so, um, yes. So let's get back to the, these two types of developers, this classification, because we talk about continuous learner. What about if you're a hacker? If you are this kind of guy that you can hack my computer now, but then you will do it in a, in a huge class, then no one is going to be able to grab that and understand it. So I would say that um, try to understand better uh, the programming paradigms, like object-oriented uh, programming, functional programming, good practice and testing. That's, of course, uh, it's a very important part. Uh, you always have to try to find a balance. Um, and then about, uh, learn about patterns, too. Um, patterns are like um, solutions that have improved that they work on a specific uh, problem, so they solve it in a smart way. So just go for that. Maybe you will find a balance. But if you're a philosopher, that doesn't mean that being a philosopher is better than being a hacker. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you have to try to find a balance in order to, to get better, um, to feel passionate about what you're doing. So if you're a philosopher, just the evil stuff. Just go for the algorithms. Um, try to learn them. Try to uh, and, and learn about anti-patterns, you know, things that you shouldn't do. Uh, for instance, you know, um, a very well-known case uh, that happened to me is, uh, in my experience, it's like when you, when you learn something new in a code base, then um, 
you tend to refactor things, but you leave probably, or sometimes you just leave the old stuff there and you go for a new uh, solution, and that introduces a pattern. I mean, it's, we're not even improving um, an anti-pattern, sorry. We are not improving our code base. We're introducing what we call the lava anti-pattern. I don't know if there is there are any people that know what a lava anti-pattern is, no? Okay, so basically, um, a lava anti-pattern is that when you have um, many ways of doing the same thing in your code base, for instance, imagine, let's put an app. You have to get some users from your database, and then you have different ways of doing that. You, because you have introduced another uh, abstraction layer, then you know th uh, there was a new developer coming over, and that introduced another way to do that. So um, when you grab that piece of code, you say, what's the good way of doing this, right? So that's a lab anti-pattern. So you should like be familiar with this to avoid all these kind of you know maintenance nightmares, and of course, try to step out of your comfort zone. Uh, that's another thing. I mean, it's up to you, of course, but um, don't feel comfortable. You can go, you know, to the office, just do your job, and just go away. It's up to you, of course. But I would suggest that you know it's it's re very related to um, accepting challenges. By accepting challenges, you're just, you know, jumping out of, you know, your comfort zone, and you're going for something else. Um, another aspect that for me um, is super important is how to be a team player. Um, why? Because we work with people. Yes, uh, in the end, yeah, we communicate with computers, uh, but those are means you reach out to people. In the end, why we are writing code, right? Because we want to reach uh, users. In the end, there are people. Unless you, you work for a Skynet and you're like reaching out Terminators or something like that, but you will be reaching out robots. But in the end, I think hopefully that's not going to happen. Um, yes, again. And so, but there are certain points uh, that we need to take into account in order to be better as a team player. We need to be respectful, always. Uh, this is something, by, uh, by being disrespectful, you don't get anything out of it. It's just you can tell things in a very respectful way, and of course, that's completely valid. Be humble, help, help other people. Um, I think we're all here today to share knowledge and I'll be pretty uh, happy, very happy to help out in any way I can. And I'll be around, and I'm expecting to share knowledge with all of you. And be honest, of course. Um, if something is wrong or you consider, just like voice your opinion. It's very important. Don't, don't, don't hide your stuff. Just you know, spread it out. Um, and another thing, when you, uh, you should be always open to accept feedback and input from anyone. Sometimes people say, oh yeah, there's a junior developer. I learn so many things from, from junior developers. So many things, just like you sit down with them and they you know, make you think in another way. So every input and feedback is valid. Listen, no finger pointing. And here's my story. Uh, so this happened um, in my current job. So when I was new, I was taking care of a release. You know, I was working on Android, of course. Uh, we have some, something that we call release captains. So we assign them. Uh, we use a release train model, which is like uh, the train departs every two weeks. And then we put all the features. And whatever is done, we just ship it. So I was the release captain for my first release, actually. And uh, just to put you into context, uh, we have around 120 million users on Android only. So I, you know, I, uh, and we were wor working on our continuous integration infrastructure and so forth. So at some point, I needed to 
to generate a new APK, the one that would be out, you know, with the new features. And what happened? I forgot to change the API endpoint, and, and instead of like pointing to our um, production version of the API, it was pointing to our alpha version of the API, which had only two servers to feed 120 million users. So at some point, you know, I, was, I started using very proud of myself, you know, my first release. And I started like went running and put on my headphones and, and the player was not working. So it was very laggy, right? Like, I don't know, like how many users were connected to, do, to, to Pentium 4 that we are using for development. And um, so I received a phone call from the CEO and the CTO. <laughs> of course, I just hung up. No, sorry, <laughs> just kidding. Um, saying, all right, um, it's not working. As far as I know, you were the release captain. Me? Oh, no, that was not me, of course. Uh, so, yeah, so basically, um, we had like a downtime of a few hours, which, you know, in this kind of uh, big companies, it has a very big impact too, right? Because if you screw it in, a, in like uh, for 10,000 users, it's not the same as if you do it with 100 million users, right? So uh, people complain in sending tweets, wow, wow, this company sucks, uh, SoundCloud sucks, uh, it doesn't work. It was because of me, right? Uh, so, so basically, uh, what I'm trying to transmit is that uh, the way we solve it is just I call uh, people from, from the mobile API and they basically put a lot of servers, you know, uh, I don't know, processing the mobile API requests, you know, on, on alpha. So basically, we increased the number of servers there, and the problem was solved. Because our alpha version was stable enough, there, the only difference is that it contains uh, features that we are trying, but it was not a big deal back in time. So the thing is, like, um, here, um, what we did is, first of all, just solve the problem. That's there's no finger pointing. There shouldn't be. You, you shouldn't, you know, start yelling at anyone because uh, this person made a mistake. We all make mistakes all the time. We're not perfect. And um, I mean, the the call, the phone call was very friendly. Of course, you know, you can feel the pressure and you start sweating. It's like, oh my god. Um, but then what we did is, all right, we solved the problem. Always do this. Solve the problem. Then try to understand why that happened. Maybe there's something wrong or like something in the environment or from the context that didn't work out for any reason. Then um, do some kind of retrospective. Try to understand what happened and how you can get better for the next time. This is how it works. Because, because then we have something that we call post-mortems. So when, when an issue of this kind happens, what we do is just uh, we send an email to the entire company, explain why this happened and why we can, how we can get better for the next time. And there was no finger pointing. I remember, like, I felt so bad, you know, the day after. And, and people were, uh, my team, they were just saying, all right, we, we screwed up. We. There's, there was no, like, Fernando was. Probably they said that, you know, in between. But <laughs> at least they, they tried to show me that was not uh, the case. No, and, and, and seriously, um, this is very important. I think that uh, orders are not uh, something I like. I think that when I, when I talk about orders, it's just like, don't be bossy. Like, you know, do that and that, that. You don't want to feel like as a developer, as a machine that only writes code, that someone comes over and says, all right, this is what it is. All right, start writing code. You don't want that. You just want to participate too. I think you can get feedback. We can make decisions all together. Of course, you know, there's specific case, but this, this might be another topic for another talk. And collaborate. Collaborate. And there is um, something that I like. Sometimes, or many times, I follow my heart. You know, sometimes you, you have all the information, but then, yeah, uh, your heart might see other things that are invisible for your eye. 
So why not? Um, well, I think I cover a few topics. I want to jump now to something very interesting, and I think this is something um, that has an impact on all of us here. It's contribution to communities. Share your experiences. I'm sharing my experiences here. Uh, could be good or bad, but we are all here for a reason. I'm pretty sure that I'll be hanging around and I'll be glad to catch up with many of you. And actually, it's my second time here in Minsk and I'm very happy to be here. And last time was a Java Dev Day and I met so many uh, nice people and we share a lot of things. We pair, we can pair if you want. We can just, just write some code afterwards. Because for me, it's important to get back to the community. We are using a lot of libraries. We are using third party, uh, other people's work. And why not giving that back to the community, right? And, um, and yeah, of course, we should definitely show what we have learned, good things and bad things. So there is um, certain ways that are about contributing to the community. We can code, of course, you know, GitHub is over there. We can go to events. That's what you guys are doing, what I'm doing too. So when everyone is happy now, uh, we can write posts. I mean, I write sometimes. Um, I have my blog uh, there. Read too. Um, talks. It's not about giving talks. It's not that you have to. I mean, if you don't like it, just don't do it. It's something that I really enjoy. Now, as I told you, I was like way shyer, and, and it's something that you know really fulfills me. And we have the option of social networks. Uh, nowadays, with Twitter, Facebook, any social network, we can spread the word. But the most important part, uh, and this is the key point, it's just do it if you have fun. Have fun. Otherwise, just don't do it. I mean, I feel very passionate about what, I do, what I'm doing, so why not? Um, yes, so there's another point that I want to address in this talk. And this is more about code and development. Um, well, of course, in order to get better, of course, the technical aspect is very important. How we behave is important too. Uh, but our main task is to write code as developers. If you're following another path, probably your main task is another one. But something that we should know is that there are no silver bullets when we are, um, of course, we are writing any solution. It could apply to many cases, but there are no silver bullets. And uh, another thing that comes to my mind is that we are not multitasking. We think we are, and I'm pretty sure most of you think that, yeah, we are multitasking. But uh, context switching is so hard. I remember that I find myself, um, probably many of you experience this situation where you're the only developer in a company and or the team, well, the team is only you, one person's team. And you had to do so many things and people coming over, especially um, product managers, well, they, they are good people. I'm going to just say, if there's any product manager, sorry. Uh, but they come over and they, of course, we are defending our, our staff, right? I'm defending from my side, you know, what I'm capable of doing. And they, of course, they, they have to report uh, that their features are being developed. So, and this, you know, makes you, uh, makes hard to constantly job jump back and forth between different features, different parts. Sometimes you have to, like, I don't know, you have to write uh, Java, then you write, you jump to Kotlin, then you jump to Scala. I don't know, whatever. And, it's, and you have to completely think differently. And it's not only about programming languages. It's about attending to meetings, understanding, and so forth. So there is something, um, if we don't want to be, if we want to tackle this problem, 
let's try to understand the difference between productivity versus effectiveness. Do you think they are the same or not? What do you think? Yes or no? I don't want anyone to explain the difference, but do you think it's different being effective than productive? Different? All right, cool. Yes, they are different. And um, the thing is, like, you can be a very productive engineer because you, um, you finish up a lot of work. You're so fast. But maybe you're not effective, which means you finish up a lot of work, but that work doesn't give much value to your product, to your project, or to your company. That happens many times. All right, yeah, I finish up like 10 tasks. And you? Oh, only one. But th that feature is being shipped uh, next week. So it's going to have an impact on uh, many users because I know how to prioritize. So in order to be productive and effective, you know how to finish up tons of tasks. You have to pick carefully what gives the, the biggest value to your product or company. So prioritize prioritize your tasks and give value. There's some techniques. For instance, in my case, what I usually do is I use a personal Kanban. Are you familiar with um, agile frameworks? In this case, Kanban's, Kanban or, or, or Scrum. So I have, you know, right next to my desk, I have a, like a personal board. And I, what I usually do is I spend like 10 minutes before uh, going back home after, um, you know, my day is over to plan out what I'll be doing uh, next day. So I just have my postings. And that's pretty cool, because then if someone comes over to me, they know what I'm working on, because it's there. It's very visible. That's an, uh, a, a cool thing of organizing yourself. And, and you, you might you know, plan out your day by having into account you know, priorities. I use, um, of course, you have to be agile. Uh, that's a good way to be. I use Pomodoro. Do you know Pomodoro, the Pomodoro technique? Yes? All right. Um, for me, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, for me, when I need to focus on some, something like in a very deep way, I would use Pomodoro, which is like all these uh, slots of time, 25 minutes time, and then you will rest for five minutes, then you will do another 25, five minutes of resting, another uh, 25 minutes, and then you have like 15 minutes for a coffee. <laughs> and, and sometimes it works, depending on what you're working on, but there are no silver bullets. It's what works for you. Just that works for me in specific situations, and I would definitely encourage its use. And um, regarding code, keep in mind that today we're writing tomorrow's legacy code. So what we wrote last week is going to be legacy probably soon because we are constantly evolving our code base uh, we need if we are scaling uh, we need to have like a healthy and sane code base to be able to scale not um, as a project but if other um, developers are jumping on board so maintainability versus performance and there's mixed feelings here for me it's like over um, always favor maintainability over performance, unless performance becomes uh, a key point in your business. For instance, if you're developing a real-time uh, system, performance becomes uh, a very important part, so just go for it. But otherwise, try to, um, to make your code base readable. Think about people that will be reading your code. Uh, so that's, that's what I wanted to cover. And in conclusion, you should definitely take care of code quality. And uh, be a good Boy Scout, too. Whenever you find something, if you find, like, I don't know, an if statement with, um, I don't know, 20 if, don't add the 21, right? Just, like, think about it, or at least you don't have to refactor the whole thing. But just, like, you can do it, like, very gradually. Uh, little by little. And um, be agile. 
And one thing that we usually miss is that we don't celebrate our achievements. Just go for a beer. And when you accomplish something, just go for a beer. Just invite your entire team and just celebrate what you have done. It's very important. That keeps your motivation up. And yes, so what happens now we have talked about um, code and development, but what about problem solving? Again, and um, in my opinion, I mean, yes, I like to repeat things uh, so you you get an idea. Like at least you know after this talk, you will have some some key idea. And for me, it's about again, challenge accepted. When it comes to a problem solving, sometimes we say, "Oh man, that's that sounds really complicated," and I, I don't think I'll be able to do this because we see like a big problem, you know, showing up. But um, there are certain things that we can do when we have like this big challenge, this big problem. Analyze the problem, of course. And always decompose. Don't, st don't think about um, I'll be able to solve this in only one step and then I'm going to put like a huge PR and everyone is going to say, of course, no one is going to find any error or any mistake because it's a huge PR. And when you see that, you're just scrolling and say, all right, it's done. Uh, and all this starts simple and works towards complexity. Start with a simple class. Or maybe it's, a, it's not the best way or it's not the cleanest way. It's a dirty way. But then you gradually start refactoring step by step, receive an input, just bring someone to your desk and discuss, go to a whiteboarding session, and, and so forth. Because you, you need to avoid uh, certain things. This happens all the time. You, you usually say, all right, I'm going to put this little temporary hack here, which is going to solve my problem. And you're so proud of your hack, of your two weeks hack because then you're, you'll be able to solve it. But what happens two years later? You go back to that code and you say, holy crap, who wrote this code? And then you check the, the, the GitHub uh, history and it was you. It was you that you bet on a temporary hack. So um, try to avoid hacks as much, as much as you can. Sometimes we have to, don't tell SoundCloud. There's some hacks around, and yeah. Um, but we, we should definitely try to avoid them. Do not reinvent the wheel. Sometimes we have in mind, oh, I'm going to create a new OK HTTP client. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, we tend to think about like further down. Oh, I'm going to create a new Picasso image loading library. Mine is going to be way better than the one that Jake Ward and, and, and his team uh, wrote. I mean, probably a better way is to just contribute to those open source projects rather than to reinventing the wheel. Because we like that, of course. We like to, all right, I'm going to hack it. And I will show to the world what I'm capable of. Um, but try to not do that. And this is a lesson learned, of course. Um, I tried to, to create an a image loading library, and, and I was leaking, like, I don't know, 80% of my app. So then I, yeah, I just said, and I spent like a couple of months, and people were so excited. And then uh, when I, all right, this is my moment of glory here. I'm going to present what I've done. And the, the app was crashing, of course. So yeah, so lesson learned there. And choose the right tool for the right job. That's key, too. Usually we tend to pick like um, a big framework that does a lot of things for us, and then we just use a small part. I think, um, you know, from my perspective, um, libraries or third-party framework should be very small and do one thing and do it really good. And again, we need to celebrate. Of course, I celebrated when I finished up my, my image loading library, which sucked. It was consuming, like, I don't know, 10 or 15 times more memory than, than Picasso. It was, a, it was a good, uh, I learned a lot. That's, 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 you know, the 
good side of that. And uh, something I, that I found very interesting is pair programming. Uh, how many of you are doing are pairing or are doing pair programming? Oh wow, okay. Not as many as I would expect. Um, well, the the concept behind pair programming is very hard to understand for 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 managers and so forth because they think that oh yeah I'm getting half the code for twice the money so I'm putting two developers there and then <laughs> and what happens? It's just like <laughs> yeah I'm paying the double and I'm getting like just a little piece of code. Um, I don't think that that is true. We ha we need to convince that that's better. So we have this our first impression that it's uh, difficult because we have to you know probably pair with someone that we don't know. It's frustrating uh, and uncomfortable because um, it happened to me and this is another little story. Um, I remember when I joined SoundCloud, I had the opportunity to work with one of the best engineers I ever know. And he was so fast. So I sat down with him. And man, it was a very frustrating situation because he was writing code. I mean, we usually, the way it works is that we have two keyboards. So we have two keyboards. 80% of, of the time we, um, we pair. In, in our office. So uh, we had two keyboards and I started you know, solving a problem. He was so good, so fast. I, 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 I didn't see you know, his hands moving and I, I, I was seeing code being generated, like you know, screens you know, going back and forth. I couldn't follow that. It was so frustrating to me. And then at some point after like half an hour, he just said, all right, you can take it over now and continue. Really? I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. So, uh, of course, you know, um, I'm pretty sh I, I understand when these kind of situations happen. But then it's when you have to tell the other people and say, all right, man, I'm not as good as you. I'm slower than you. So you have to adjust. You have to understand that other people, that we are not the same. I mean, I consider myself that I usually start with the dirtiest solution. So when, when I pair with someone, it's just like, really? You're doing that? You're like creating static methods? Everywhere, yeah, but then wait, wait, hold on. Uh, I will try to get better. <laughs> and um, trust me, it's not true that it's difficult. Of course, you know, it takes practice and um, you have to adjust, you have to be patient, and other people must be patient with you too. Um, usually, there's a lot of factors involved when pairing, you know, cultural um, stuff, you know, behavior, and so forth. But it's very and reaching. It's super nice because you know you're um, you're there. You are you're acquiring a lot of knowledge. You're seeing how other people work, and I would say definitely say don't be afraid and just at least try it. We can try it. I mean, if someone you know is up to pair with me on something today, I will be around for today and tomorrow. So why not? Um, because then we have things for free. We have tests. Because there's four eyes, you know, looking at the same piece of code. Uh, we have code quality. Of course, that's way better because we have other point of view, um, people helping us, um, understanding better, transmitting that uh, knowledge to you. And we learn a lot. We learn a lot. So, um, why not? As I said, if someone is up for doing that, I'll be open or just like let's dive into some code and um, just to wrap up a little bit um, I'd like to I would definitely love to talk about the programming as art so art is about a human expression when we are writing code this is very philosophical we are expressing ourselves ourselves and um, for instance, uh, whenever, if you pick uh, some source code, like just grab one, any square library, Android library, man, that's art. You see that code and it's like, oh my God, I mean, these guys know what they are doing. 
and and you can see that the piece of code is very easy to understand. On the other hand, just look into the view class of Android, 10,000 lines of code. Who understand that? I mean, I try many times to understand what's going on there. It's just like, oh my god, man, this is a super god class that does too many things. And again, code is communication between people. When you're writing code, think as the person who's going to write, who's going to read that code is a serial killer. You don't want that person to go, oh, you wrote this? I cannot get anything. So um, just to wrap it up, some inspirational quotes. Yes, ideas that spread win. And um, this is something that we usually tend like um, to hide our ideas. Oh, because someone is going to steal what I'm doing. It's just like, no, just spread the word. Because ideas that are not shown, they don't go anywhere. That's another lesson there. Don't be afraid of that. You, you can get a lot of input. Uh, and maybe that makes you think that you're not taking the, the right path towards what you're trying to do. And yeah, this is something that, uh, for me, the most valuable part is that you, uh, what you get out of mistakes that you have made. That's very important. And uh, of course, you, by success, successing, you get knowledge too. But you know, it's that moment when you hit your head against a wall is when you really understand what you made wrong. And always ask yourself, what is your mission? Where you want to go? Um, and, and what's the path towards that direction? Uh, maybe you're thinking more about like, all right, I'm going to write code, but then I will you know, follow up the path of, uh, you know, to a more management position. Or maybe you want to be technical. So always ask yourself. What's your purpose? Be passionate about what you're doing. And um, I think that's that's uh, pretty much what I have to what I wanted to cover today. Um, I think it's very interesting to be able to not to talk about in a in a deep technical way because there's going to be tons of talks which are very interesting today, and um, and I think that we're usually we miss that part. We miss the part of like how we should behave, how we should um, interact with people, not only with computers. And um, I think we have, we still have a few, uh, couple of minutes for some questions. If you have one, or if you have a few, and I'll be very glad to answer those. Thank you for now.